right, so day number three. We are going, right now we're at Lake Superior Provincial Park. Rabbit blanket. Right there. And we're going all the way to Kekabeka Falls. So, pretty far, 530 kilometers. It's our longest day yet. We got a bunch of stops. Um, do you remember which ones we're gonna try? <laughs> I think the falls in the gorge, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, Aquazabon. That's going to be really nice. It's yeah, gonna that be a longer ish day. That is the plan. It is definitely going to be a long day. Yep. Day number three. Here we go. I do feel mildly guilty driving through the campground at seven in the morning with the bike, but. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, sorry everybody, good morning. Not the word I would have picked, but... This is the Wawa Goose. It's a big old goose. Um, it's actually here, it commemorates the completion of the Trans-Canada Highway, which only happened in 1960 actually, so not that long ago. Um, before it was completed, you have to, used to have to go way, way north to get across the country, but uh, the completion here, the southerly route, definitely sped things up a bit, and they celebrated by building a giant goose. Now, this is not the original goose. The original goose actually lives in town somewhere. This is the new and improved goose. And it is a big goose. <laughs> and that's the Trans-Canada. We're going that way. We're going that way. I gotta remember to keep looking at the camera sometimes. Oh, they're going that way too, it looks like. B-rolls! <laughs> So this is very convenient. That's where we were yesterday. That's where we are now. That's where we're going. And this is where we're spending the night. Boom. Day summed up in 15 seconds. Everyone Gucci? All right, thumbs up all around. I, I can see your thumbs up. <laughs> Bye Goose. This is Nay's Lookout. And down there is Nay's Provincial Park, which we did not go to. We are going that way, over that bridge, that way. Let's go. This looks like it's gonna cost money. <laughs> when there's a fancy sign like this. Is that what it is?
So that brief uh, interlude was the Aguasaban Gorge and Falls. Uh, unfortunately, that was the only view we could get because the trail going down to where you can see the actual falls is closed, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, basically the falls exist because of a power project. Um, a lot of the water is being diverted um, to another part of the lake, basically, where they're going down through a hydroelectric dam. So the falls are not what they would be normally. Uh, a lot of the water is diverted, like I said, to the power. But still pretty cool. Cool gorge, cool waterfall. Too bad we couldn't get a better view, but c'est la vie. <laughs> yeah. It's probably pretty low water levels right now, too, because some of the photos and I, what I remember last time passing through, the, the falls were a lot more. Uh, a more like there was a lot more volume of water going down. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's been a pretty dry summer. All right, next stop is Nipigon for lunch. We're on our way to look out at the Nipigon River, I'm assuming, and their fancy dancy new bridge. Pretty good lookout. Nipigon River flowing from Lake Nipigon to Lake Superior. Here's their fancy dancy new bridge. Pretty neat. He's doing it. I'm doing it! <laughs> I'm here! Woo! It's a lot more stairs than it looks like, eh? Yeah. Oh, it's a lot more stairs than it seems. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, that was a delicious lunch. If you are passing through Nipigon, and Ducky's Diner is quite delicious. I highly recommend the fried chicken. It's not chicken pieces, it's uh, chicken strips or chicken sandwiches, but man, that is good stuff. Now, I gotta try to stay awake, because I'm very full. But uh, we are heading now to an amethyst mine, which is pretty cool. So we should be there in about a half hour, and we're gonna check it out. Also, just to give you an idea of how hot it is out today, when we were in the restaurant, someone came in and said Ian's bike was about to fall over. And that's because his kickstand was melting into the asphalt. So uh, yeah, that, big thanks to that guy for letting us know, but uh, Ian's moved over to a better asphalt location. And uh, looks like he's not the first one to have the problem either. See that? Spot. Oh, that was your second spot? Oh my second god. Spot, my third spot there. <laughs> That's better? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, mine's doing okay. So, uh, careful when you park on uh, hot asphalt, I guess. This is Blue Point Amethyst Mine, um, just outside of Thunder Bay, Ontario, just east of Thunder Bay. West, east, yeah. East, yeah. Yeah, I went to <laughs> Thunder Bay just yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. Um, yeah, yeah huge, huge props to the owner, Jordan. He gave us a bit of information on the area. It uh, looks like a pretty cool operation. Apparently, Canada is has the largest deposit of amethyst in the world, and it's right here. Uh, there's a bunch of mines in this area. I think he said there's three like directly like has his neighbors. Oh, and wow. uh, the amethyst we can find here is between one and two billion years old. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna 
we're not gonna be going into the mine itself, but they have these piles where they uh, the deposit the, the uh, yeah, the mine's just over here. But they have these piles where they drop off the stuff, they break out, and then they come and collect it. So we're gonna do some collecting, we're gonna check out this dangerous open hole, and yeah, hope we find some cool amethyst. So this is a relatively new pit. But he said, uh, Jordan was telling us, he did some ground penetrating radar and the pit goes down 650 feet or the, uh, the amethyst vein goes down 650 feet and it gets wider at the bottom. So there's lots of amethyst here to be extracted. You can see there, they've already got a good start, but lots more to go. All right, let's go, let's go hunting. Let's see what we can find. Yeah, like, there's so many little bits, I don't, I don't know how. Like as the owner, like what do you pick? Yeah, yeah that's crazy. You can see the little veins running right through. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah, it is. Hold on, make up the treasure in the middle. It's a rock. <laughs> nice. It was on the bottom all along. No, oh, look at this piece that we're hammering on, though. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is a pretty cool piece. Look in there. It's it's, it's red. Let's just bring that piece. You can put that in the trailer. Oh. How are you so good yeah. at this? Here's another piece that's straight up amethyst. Dude, yeah. that was like pro. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> impressed. Me too. I, this is my <laughs> first time hammering rock. This is actually really fun. I was like <laughs> stress relieving. All right, that was Blue Point Amethyst. Awesome, man. That was really cool. It was a really cool experience. I learned a lot. Jordan is full of awesome information. I could talk to the guy for a long time. He knows his rocks and minerals. That's for damn sure. So big thanks to Jordan. Big thanks to Blue Point Amethyst Mine. We got a nice bag of amethyst that we're going to be hauling across the rest of the country now, which is pretty fun. But yeah, it was a really cool experience, highly recommended. And uh, I think that's it for the day. We're going to uh, get to our park and have a nice relax. Super dangerous corner. <laughs> Kakabeka Falls. It do be fallen. We did it. <laughs> so here's a new experience. Check out this sweet wrist tan. <laughs> that is what happens when your jacket is a little too short and your gloves are a little too small. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, put some sunscreen on that tomorrow, I think. Take number three. Day four, good morning. Good morning, everybody. What What's on the agenda for today? Today, we are heading from Kakabeka Falls to Rushing River Provincial Park, just half hour shy of Kenora. Um, I think one of the, a few highlights for the this little stretch, hopefully, will be the Height of the Land, which is the Arctic watershed where all the water being collected in that area region will start flowing to the Arctic and none of it down to the Great Lakes. Yeah, that's where we're going. Yeah, we got a 530 kilometer day, so another pretty long day. Uh, a couple stops to see on the way, and yeah, we're gonna go ride some motorcycles. Yeah, day four, baby, let's go. <laughs> So our first stop of the day is about a kilometer away, not even, because we're going to see the Kakabeka Falls. We didn't actually get to them yesterday, so we're going to go check them out right now. Nice short ride, just over yonder hill.
So we're going to go check out the falls, Kekebeka Falls. Um, it's a 40 meter waterfall, so it's actually a pretty big waterfall. And uh, the word Kekebeka is actually an Ojibwe word, which means water over a cliff. So uh, pretty literal definition of a waterfall. But yeah, there you go. Kekebeka, water over a cliff. Let's go check it out. A oh, much better view than the waterfall we had yesterday. This is pretty cool. Oh, let's take it back to falls. Not too shabby. Next stop is the Arctic River watershed, which is like an hour or so, so good stop to break. Ooh, gravel. I thought that was pavement. Yeah. yeah. Let's park in front of it. We'll get up a nice bike shot. So this is the Arctic watershed. From here, all streams flow north into the Arctic Ocean. In case you couldn't read that on the sign. <laughs> Which where we'll be going. That's where we're going, baby. But uh, we're not there yet. We're actually probably right about here. So all the water here goes this way into the Great Lakes, over yonder. And everything on this side of the line goes that away to the sky, or the north, which is that away. although that's west right now, but you know, you get the idea. Rainy lake. Not very rainy today, thank God. Oh, that was too far back. So, hopefully this works out. I'm gonna try here. So, out on the water here, there's a bunch of birds, and those are actually pelicans, which was shocking because I didn't know pelicans hung out on freshwater lakes, but apparently they do, and there they are. I felt it hit my knee. Oh. 
Nope. Oh no, it's a truck! It's done. Yeah. No, the phone I'm holding is done. Well, Otterbox didn't prevent that. Crap. Yeah. So on the other side of the lake there, that's the United States. That's why they call it International Falls on that side. But we're in Fort Francis. All right. It's raining. I'm going to see if I can go to the cell phone place and get my cell phone fixed up. And these guys are going to go for lunch. And then hopefully I will meet them after my cell phone is fixed, slash I have a new phone, and then I'll eat some lunch. So that's the plan. If all goes well, then all will be well. If not, then I'm not gonna have a cell phone for a few days, which is not the end of the world. But it would be nice if I did. So no luck with the phone, unfortunately. Definitely gonna have to wait a little bit, but one day I will have a fixed phone that works. So I'm gonna go find these guys now and then get some lunch. And hopefully the rain will be done by the time lunch is done. So this is Nestor Falls. On the right is the Lake of the Woods, which is one of the largest freshwater lakes uh, in the world. Definitely in Ontario. And here are the falls. We're gonna go down to that rock after and get a, another. Oh, Fred, you see the pelican? There's a pelican! <laughs> Sorry, pelican excitement. But yeah, we're gonna go down to that rock by that pelican and see if we can't get a better view. Alright, here's the bottom of Nestor Falls. And this pelican is still going crazy. He good eats. Oh, I don't wanna scare him away though. Yeah, it's a waterfall. I think the pelican's the highlight of this though. Good job, pelican. They're like a weird dinosaur. <laughs> so moving on, next up is our campsite. So we did get a little bit of rain. Just enough to make things damp. But it stopped now and everybody's drying out, so. That is fantastic. And that should be the rest of the rain for the day. Which is good because I'd rather our camping equipment not get all wet. And it doesn't seem like it's going to. So we are about 50 kilometers or so, half hour from our campground. And yeah, we'll be there soon. Oh my god. Oh my god! Russian River! It is your turn. We're at Russian River Provincial Park. Evening of day number four. We're gonna check out the beach. It looks like it's got a really cool beach slash lake. Actually, you're probably checking out the lake. The beach is kind of far from where we're camp. But we're gonna check out the lake. It looks pretty interesting. We made it to the lake. The lake of Russian River. There should be a river on yeah. this lake. I, I think the rushing part is over yeah. uh, behind the camera across. where you can't see. Yeah. yeah. But this is beautiful. This is really nice. Yeah, it's a very beautiful campus. I'm, I'm glad I found this on the first time through this way on my own solo motorcycle trip because it's very wonderful, very pretty. Yeah, it's very nice.
yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely filming. Get, get your morning stretching. Oh, here's Husky the Muskie. No real explanation, just a big old fish. Welcome to Manitoba. <laughs> nice. A dirty chain. Let's get it nice and cleaned up. Gotta get those chains nice and shiny.